Hi, Mike Senna here. Uh, what I wanted to show you today was the evolution of my robot carts. These are the carts that I take uh, and put my robots on, secure them on the carts, and take them to conventions or mount them in trucks or things for moving. So here's my first generation of the cart. Ignore these wheels right here for now. I'll be talking about them in a little while. These not were not on here on my first generation of this cart. So what I have here is a piece of plywood that's mounted on uh, a regular hand truck that you can get from anywhere. And I had it secured with these U-bolts. So in essence, you put the U-bolt on here and secure this down with the nuts. So with four of them on here, on the four points of these bars, uh, you have this plywood secured down on here now. So if you can see, this is actually for R2, so you can see his front wheels would go here, and his back drivetrain would fit in these wheel stops. So I have, how do you secure him down onto this cart? So now you have the, the cart secured and everything else secured. Uh, I have these little uh, hooks that I kind of just, they were regular eye hooks and I bent them out. Uh, put a little bead here so that it wouldn't slip out of this hole. So let me show you, this, this drivetrain doesn't have the little hole that this goes into. So I'm just gonna show it to you on, on this uh, R2. So there's a little hole down there uh, in the drivetrain. You can actually put it anywhere you want. Um, any robot you have, you could probably configure it where you can have your own hole uh, drilled anywhere on your robot. So what would happen was it has a little wing nut here. I put this through this hole, attach it to the hole that's in the drivetrain, push it through, and then just cinch it up with the uh, wing nut. Okay, when these are cinched down very securely but on both sides of these two, two legs, R2 will be held down very strong. You wouldn't need one up front because it just won't move. And um, this is how it's, it's made its trek from here to, from California to Florida in somebody else's truck. It was secured, uh, this platform gets secured to the wall of the truck using uh, um, ratchets, and um, we just attach it to the side of the truck, any moving truck. And uh, when you get to your event, of course this helps to come out. And you're able to pull your R2 anywhere, and he'll be completely secure on this cart. So that was the first generation of, of this cart. So the second generation of this cart was adding these wheels here. Uh, why I did that, I wanted more functionality uh, from the system I had here. So uh, I, I didn't always need this big hand truck. For instance, if I wanted to take this platform and have a smaller form factor to load it into a truck with a whole bunch of other droids, it'd be much easier to be able to work without this, with this giant hand truck. So I decided to mount these wheels on there. These wheels are four inch wheels uh, that I mounted and for Archie Builders, this measures 31 inches by 27 and a half inches. So why would I want to do this again? It's for ease of use, um, ease of transportation, and where I don't need this cart. And mainly, and more importantly, if you want to have a small footprint for loading onto trucks and basically just and easier to, uh, to, to handle and move around. In addition to what I was saying, the, um, we'd again ratchet strap this to the side of the truck. Uh, it's just as easy. And if everybody had built their platform in the same manner, uh, they self-contain R2 without any points sticking out very much. So they can be butted side to side 
as long as they had four inch casters or something similar, the platforms could be pushed next to each other and it would support each other in any kind of movement. If you have your R2 secured properly down to your cart, nothing will fall off and everything will be okay. So let's take a look at the maybe final generation of, of this type of cart. So definitely I wanted to get something more convenient. Uh, those last two versions I was showing you, I had to actually fit, have someone help me physically lift the droid off. So some of these droids got really heavy, especially Wally. He was weighing in around 240 pounds. So to, to avoid lifting, any lifting at all, from taking it from entry point to the venue, offloading to the drop-off point, and then into the operation, I didn't want to lift the robots at all. So I came up with the solution that was I thought was pretty good. So you'll see here it's pretty compact. In the form. So you can put it this under a table. You can store it up against the wall after you're done. Very small. You can put it on, on under a table at a convention and you can stack other things on top of it, your bags or anything like that. Um, it can be used to move your tools, anything. Uh, it's a little wider so that you can put your robot on there and you'll have a front and back space. You can put tools, you can put uh, uh, leather electronic bags, you can put uh, you know coolers, anything you wanted to on it. So how does this one work? First of all, the handle is integrated here. You see it it's just laying up against here. But it has a little hole in the cart. And I created this wing nut that's just on a little bolt. And when it's not in use, I'll just put it back into there. This has a hole in here and a hole here. Push through and lock it. So this now becomes handle for the cart. So with this handle also, I could remove this if I'm going into an elevator. I'll either move the handle sideways. When I maneuver in the hand in the elevator it doesn't stick out so far. But you can also if you want stick it in this way provided you have your droid in the right position here. Uh, a lot of t better times this is good for Wally. So uh, the handle itself is really multifunctional um, in, in its operation. Uh, another feature of this cart is the ability for tilting. So I'll show you this whole system. What it does just tilts down. So why is that neat and important? I'll show you right here. You've got your 240 pound robot. And I want to load them up to show it somewhere. onto the platform and then secure the screw. What this screw does is it holds the platform. Now this platform won't tilt backwards. So I can show you the bottom of this platform and the mechanics of it and how it works. The construction does have welding in it. So it's mainly the frame that's welded up. So what may, let's just take a look at the tilting mechanism. So what this is right here is just a pipe, gas pipe. And what these are is just the gas pipe hangers. So what those help do here is they serve as a hinge. 
simple hinge. And you can see right here where the uh, eye, the uh, wing nut is. It just comes down onto this stop and it has a little bolt welded here. So that's what that uh, wing nut screws down to. So it does have supports here on the side that doesn't tilt when it comes down, it'll stop and hold. So you can see it's kind of centered on the board. Um, that's why when you load your stuff, your robots on the cart, you kind of want the, the mass of the weight to come here. So you want to position your robot the, as most as you can, as far as you can on the, the tilting bed. So when you see it on this side, separation. So it works just as well with R2. See, he is, looks like he's sitting a little dangerously off the cart, but he actually isn't. His uh, wheel is, is uh, on this bumper. So again, you would just screw down the, the uh, wing nut, and this front piece of wood holds his uh, uh, front uh, wheels, caster wheels there. So operation to... And this one, it doesn't have anything to really secure it to the board. I can add that, but I haven't needed it. And uh, the reason is because this is more of a, uh, an event cart, not a transportation cart. So to take him off is just as easy. I just tilt it, lift his front just a little, and roll him off. So as you can see, maybe more clearly, the frame of the cart is just as an open piece right here. Now, if it is too wobbly, I was thinking about adding a removable piece right here that goes across. And maybe uh, it would be just an extra piece that's removable. And then as soon as you put it back up, you can slide it back in somehow. That would give you more steadiness if, you're, if your droid is, if you feel that this plywood piece is not supporting your droid enough, which would be this fat for the board. But in what I've done so far, uh, I've never needed to, um, never felt the need to have something that's supported on this end. But once this is locked down, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. So let me show you, uh, let me show you the, the full loading uh, scenario, I guess. So I'll load R2 up and I'll show you the rest of this thing. So the prep of this thing is, this is the crane basically the, the robot crane. There's two parts. There's this part, which goes on the floor of the van. Ugh. And what I have here is just one securing, or three securing points, but on just one side of the, of this frame. Uh, your car, your van could be different with securing points, but uh, the basic points are just where the seats went and latched in. So I put these hooks, again they're just eye hooks and they're cut off. Uh, 
spin these on. Spin these on. And this was actually created at a time where I wasn't welding. So if you look at this whole contraption, it's just put together with these pipe, uh, I don't even know what you call these. Couplings. Couplings maybe, yeah. Uh, these actually I think were made for rails, handrails, but uh, that would just designate what kind of pipes you can use. You can weld something together if you can weld, and I probably would weld them. Uh, I've got this again. So this is the second part to this crank. It's uh, just the crane part. It uh, goes into this hole. And what I did was got a winch from Harbor Freight. Uh, this is a garage door pulley and this is another garage door pulley and mounted this crane here uh, this is a plug that I didn't know what else to, to use at the time I guess I would use something different at this point in time but this is just an audio plug and uh, connected it up to 12 volts and ground and um, that enables me to operate my crane. If you look, it's the same uh, type of rail holders. Uh, nothing's welded on this one. Gas pipe. Uh, I did use a solid piece here uh, and a gas pipe uh, support. I get to the venue I will load them in a cart and push them into the venue because mainly in the venues they don't want anybody to know that, that it's R2 coming into the venue so he'll be uh, covered with a barbecue cover so inside here I've got my crossbar my usual axle for R2 and I do have a contraption here these accept pipes to hold R2 manually if I ever want to move him, uh, if I'm ever at a venue where I have to go upstairs, inside of him I have two pipes where I can attach these two things. Now, two people can take him and hold each pipe and bring him upstairs pretty easily. Um, he's not that heavy, 140 pounds maybe, but he's very awkward. So these pipes are always inside the R2, so at any time we could use them. So what I added was this little uh, joint here so I can hook this on. Now I can just press the up button. Oh, I need one more piece. Uh, this is just to keep his front wheels in in a socket place to to hold it in. So you just swing it in and drop him down. I would unhook them and just take the crane down and put it into its position in the van. Uh, I have an interesting way, I guess, of latching them in as well. Just two uh, ratchets here. I was fortunately had a hook 
right here and underneath you can't see I have something I can hook up to the inner frame and once I cinch this up he's well cinched in the front You want to come on this side. Oops. <laughs> so what we have here, I just hook up into a uh, existing latch into this handle of the R2 and cinch him down. Now both of these latch down firmly this way. The droid isn't gonna move from side to side and isn't gonna move from back to front. So this uh, way to do it is quick and easy. Um, I assume any kind of robot that you're transporting, uh, you can find some kind of holds that you can use or, or weld something, a bar together that you can put latching points where you probably only need to to do. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess I'll show you the just placing them. We can just place them on the the uh, the cart, and we'd be off to the venue. So now you're at your venue. You got your crane hooked up. Out, put the crane back in your car, and you put your head on, you put on your tools, and just drag them off to your event. So, again, once you're there, break down the cart, put it in its position, and you're ready to go. So, that's the cart evolutions. I hope it'll help you out and uh, show you, at least give you some ideas of how you can make a tilting cart for yourself, or actually anything that you want to, it's heavy that you want to drag out and. Uh, whatever tools whatever that rolls so hope that helps you out and i guess i'll see you on the next video